My name is Stuart Stewart, and I'm from San Francisco. I work for a company called Driver, where we do genomic sequencing of, um, of tumors and do analysis on that. Um, my talk today is on logic programming in Scala, and a little bit of history. So this is all based on Minikanren, which if you haven't heard of it, it's a, um, it's a logic programming DSL written by William Byrd. It's, it's embedded in the scheme. The nice thing about it is it has, a, it has a small, purely functional core, so it's very easy to take and just port over to different languages. And, and there, are, there are many ports of it. And there are, you could, if you look on GitHub, you could find three other ports in Scala. So um, specifically, I learned this from uh, the, the book, The Reason Schemer. And my implementation is based on the paper by um, Jason Heeman on microcanron, which is an even smaller core. Um, great. So, what is uh, what is this exactly? So, what what is uh, what do I mean when I say relational programming or logic programming? Um, so, a relation. If I could, oh, let me get that out. All right. So, a relation where a function might have um, you know a couple of inputs and and some output, like say say cons, or let, let's. Uh, uh, Okay, so here I'm defining an x, y, and z. Um, and if you're to cons x, if you're to cons 1 onto the list 2, 3, then you'd get um, that, that result there, z. So a relation <coughs> is, um, is very similar, except that in, uh, instead of two inputs and one, and one output, you have just three different inputs. And all it says is that those two are related by um, if you cons x onto y, then you get uh, you get the result z. So we can um, we can run that uh, q and run here. Uh, I'll let you know more later. But that basically just uh, searches for solutions. Um, oh, uh, bu -bu. so conzo is my relational version of um, of that same thing. Okay, and and there there are there are results. Um, great. So uh, I'm going to go on and go straight into the basics. So we don't have uh, we don't have too much time to uh, to run through. So uh, here here's a uh, here's our, our our most basic goal constructor. It basically says that our, our variable q um, is the same as three. So if we run that and get all the possible results, it says, OK, 3 is a possible result for Q. Um, here we have, um, we have a, a disjunction. We have either Q equals 3 or Q equals 4, and result, as, as you might expect. Here, Q equals 3 and Q equals 4. Um, Q cannot equal both of those. So as, as you might expect, the stream of results will be empty. Um, we have a we have a shorthand for that. We could just fail here is a is a goal that always fails, and similarly we have succeed, which is a goal that um, always succeeds. So here um, the, these things are all goals, and I'm just composing them in various ways. So um, you'll see a, a a new thing here when I, when I run succeed. There there is this uh, there's this underscore zero, and what that is is a is a placeholder. For um, for my for my variable q, which is unbound, so <clears throat> if, if this stream is returning all possible results that um, you know all possible values of q that that satisfy this goal succeed, then then q could be any value, which is why the, um, which is why it stays unbound, and you and you get that underscore zero. So you know you could have um, many more you. And there we have five different unbound variables, and no matter what value they had, uh, you know this this goal would succeed. Great. So going just a little bit more. Oh, we have that. Okay. Um, this one here, all is just a conjunction, so it can, uh, it returns um, goals if all of those, uh, you know, all of the goals that. All the states such that those three goals hold. So here um, we are relating S to T, um, and as we see, uh, so S and T here are related. You see um, our, our results. Yeah, these are. Well, let, let me go to something simpler. Uh, da, da, da. All right. Um, 
So given a Q and an R, if we say Q equals R, um, sorry? Oh, yes. Thanks. Great, yeah, so there, Q and R are, um, are bound to the same variable, and you, and you can see that when, when they're reified. And you know, otherwise, they would have just been um, uh, distinct. So I, I can show you a quick example of how to, um, how to use that. Uh, so he, here's, a, here's a, a regular append. You have your, your list, A, B. It, it's written um, a little bit differently than you might normally want to, but um, that's because I'm, I'm going to translate that here. So we have, um, so we have any of a, of, of a couple cases. So the first case here is that our first list is empty. So um, if if it's empty, then it's also true that uh, list B is empty. So. All right, and the other case, um, we have, we have, uh, we've introduced temporary variables, variables here, A, A, S, and Rex. I'm going to introduce those. Um, so there exists logic variables, A, A, S, and Rec, such that um, all of the following cases hold. So we have um, A const onto A, S is L, A. Um, the recursive case, we have appendo, and we're going to relate. So if, if you get AS and LV to recursive case, and then we have um, our output is a cons onto the recursive case. So um, conso A recursive case is our output. Great, and uh, we can test that out. I'll just... Okay, so uh, um, we can append one onto, and um, oh, um, All right, now I'm just going to get out of there. All right, import that. Uh, all the list of Sorry? Um, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. There we go. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was doing cons for some reason. All right, um, append a list of one. Great, so that, that's interesting, but um, this is a relation. So we, we don't have to have our Q as, as the output. We could put Q here in the beginning, and um, our result could be um, one, two, three. And it will solve Q to be the list of one. Um, that, that would help me earlier. So, and, and, and we can do uh, many more things. So we could have Q R um, two. Oh, oops, what's that? Uh, and this, this gives you all, all possible um, different solutions for, for that. Um, and we have, generally, we could just. Uh, And here, this gives you the shape of all possible um, all possible solutions. So here you have a list of uh, you know four logic variables and some arbitrary other logic variable, and it consists those four onto that, which could be a nil, it could be some other list, um, but we just don't know what it is yet. Okay, um, how much more time do I have? Uh, I should have just enough, five more minutes. Um, if everything goes as timed, 
so here uh, I have uh, I have an example problem. So we we have um, we we have a, a a case here. This is from SICPI, if you recognize it, um, and. Uh, we have Marianne's Moore's father has has a bunch of friends and they all have daughters and they all they all have boats and they've named their daughters after their friends' boats, and they give you some clues here and you have to figure out who um, who owns what boat and specifically they're asking who is Lorna's father. So the nice thing about this is that you can just read this kind of straight off one by one and and it, it, it's very declarative and it, it, if you were to solve this normally you might you know you might brute force overall if it and and um, and just filter for the cases but the search strat but um, that's not quite as efficient as doing it this way, and, and and this one abstracts your search strategy out. So I, I'll go ahead and uh, start for that. So we have um, I have two little um, helper functions here. So uh, um, daughters and fathers is, is modeled as, as a list of um, as a list of names, and um, as our daughters and yachts. And I have that a um, a father and a daughter are related if if the father and daughter share the same, share the same precision in the list. So Mary might be the first element of the list, and and, and uh, that that means she is Moore's Moore's daughter because Moore is the first here. So um, we we're looking for Lorna's father. It already knows that there are five different possibilities. If it were Parker's daughter, Lorna would be in the fifth position, and we don't want to know what's what's. Uh, what the rest is there. So, so let's uh, let's just start reading the problem. Marianne Moore's father. So, um, Moore. Okay, has a yacht, and each of and and so does each of his four friends. So, um, so Okay, and they all have daughters. So now at this point we see, um, okay, now it at least knows that the lists only have five elements, and we, we know some things about those, and we have a few possible candidates. Um, let, let's go on. So each of the five has, has, um, has named his yacht at one of the daughters. So let's uh, permuto yachts, uh, daughters, whoop. And now we have um, many more possibilities coming up. Um, uh, let's just keep keep reading through that. So we have um, Mr. Moore owns the Lorna. So owns Moore the Lorna. Um, Hall owns the Rosalind. Lind. Melissa is owned by Colonel Downing. Downing. The Melissa, which also happens to be um, Barnacle's daughter. So, Barnacle, there we go. And now this next one is a little bit more complicated. So Gabriel's father owns the yacht that's owned by Parker's daughter. So um, we have a mysterious Gabriel's father uh, and Parker's daughter. And uh, what do we know about those? So sires, Gabriel's father, um, Gabrielle, of course, hopefully. And um, oh, Parker, Parker's daughter. And those two are related, and that, um, let's see, Gabriel's father owns a boat named after Parker's daughter. Great. So let me um, actually fix that real quick. Type check, great. Cool, um, at this point we only have Four possibilities. That doesn't seem quite right because I think we've exhausted all of these. Uh, you, you missed that one. Yeah, you missed one of the yachts. One of the yachts. Which one is that? So Barnacle. Oh, great. So Barnacle owns the Gabrielle. Oh, 
comma, there we go. And downlinks are farther, great. So yeah, you can see that that, 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 was, a, that was very easy to translate. Um, you didn't have to do any search strategy, and it's, it's what, 12, 13, 14 lines of you know, very declarative code. So it, it's, it's very complementary and kind of fits, uh, fits into Scala. This is a lot easier for someone who's already doing functional programming to, to translate. You know, as you saw with the uh, Pendo, it, it's, it's very easy to tr translate functions into, um, into relations, whatever that is. Um, great. So uh, I'm I'm out of time. I think I, I will. Uh, I'll leave you with some resources. There, there is the the recent schema. This is, and, and there are various other implementations. And um, I don't think there are. Oh, th there is a lot a lot of work to be done on this. Um, you know, this equality constraints, finite domains, and so forth. Um, types. If you if you if you're watching closely, you'll you'll notice that you'll notice some any's in there. I do have a type version, but uh, the syntax isn't quite nice yet. So um, uh, it, it does have a lot of work before it's more usable. And um, with that, uh, thank you. Thank you.